Hey guys, it's Troy, and you know, lately I've been showing a lot of vintage fountain pens, and uh, I've been collecting both new ones and old ones, but I have a great appreciation for both. And I was asked just recently, because I've been dealing a lot with vintage pens as of late, uh, what some of my favorites were. So I figured I'd go ahead and share with you. Now, i got to hand it to guys who I see online um, and I communicate with, who just have an incredible knowledge of different models and what they look like and proper caps and proper uh, proper nibs that went with uh, particular pens that just amazes me because that's generally not me um, I'm the guy who likes to get them use them play with them a little bit and pass on uh, a little bit of information but you know I'm gonna share with you some of my favorites because I was asked just recently what some of my favorites were so I've got a bunch of them laid out here in front of me so if it's a little noisier in here um, and if I have to uh, pause the recording for an edit because of more noise uh, I'm in a different room just so I can have enough room to lay everything out here in front of me because my normal desk just won't quite cut it. So in no particular order, all right, I, I just went down my uh, my spreadsheet of pens and a uh, little bit by bit started to pull some of my favorite ones out and put them on a list. So um, you're going to find, however, that you're going to find three or four brands in particular. For, so for pens from uh, the 1910s up through about the 1950s or so, uh, you're going to find Schaefer's, Waterman's, Parker's, um, and maybe some Wall Eversharp thrown in there, Esther Brooks. Uh, those are the major players that were in the fountain pen game uh, that you're going to find in abundance. So let's start with this one here. And I had a conversation about this one here just recently, a Schaefer Snorkel. I got this one a little while back. And um, this was an Admiral. And the cool thing I was just talking about with the guys who uh, know what caps belong with what, um, two different folks uh, over the past year have told me that this is not the original cap that came with this particular pen. So it's got the open nib to it uh, and the more traditional style nib. And I know that this one is uninked, so I can go ahead and uh, open this sucker up for you and see the snorkel come out. And it's got the touchdown filling system. So really uh, inventive by uh, Schaefer and so I got several pens that fill this way I'll, I'll share some of those here with you so this is this is one of my favorites and like I said in no particular order so let's go with that I love this this is the wall ever sharp skyline I liked it enough to buy a second one not too long ago and uh, I, I see uh, a bunch of them for sale from antique digger uh, but these are two of them that were in my collection that I got. Uh, this one was uh, resacked by somebody out of New Hampshire, and I bought this one um, from uh, Brian McQueen, who uh, McQueen pens over on Instagram. You can find him there. Uh, but uh, these are my two Wall Eversharp Skylines. Absolutely love these pens. Uh, they write very nicely. Um, the the whole and I did a review of these. Uh, a while back so you can find that on my YouTube channel but it's supposed to be reminiscent of a, uh, a train, a locomotive out of the, like the 1950s or so uh, in that look on the cap but um, absolutely love these I, I can't speak more highly of these than that because they're a dream to write with. They write great, uh, they hold fine in the hand, and I just love the Wall Eversharp Skyline. And I'm going to separate them because this one needs to be flushed out. You're going to find a lot of my pens here need to be flushed and cleaned. Uh, matter of fact, I, here's a picture of all the pens that I need to flush and clean, so I'm going to put them in different containers after that. So, uh, the Waterman Crusader, I've got two of those, and this is the one actually has been my pen of the day, and I guess more of the pen of the weekend, because I've been using it for the past uh, several days, and the Waterman Crusader comes out in the 1940s, a lever filler from Waterman. This one has a 5A nib on it. It writes very nicely. I filled it with some Yamabuto, so uh, this was the Waterman Crusader. This one I knew was inked. Some of my pens are not inked, so you're going to find uh, some of these I'll write with, some of them I will not. Uh, but I've got two of these, one in black and one in 
burgundy. The one that's black, I need to tear apart. Uh, it's not writing as well as I'd hoped it would, so it needs a little bit of service on that one. So, Esterbrook. I love Esterbrooks. I cut my teeth on learning how to play with pens a little bit on Esterbrook. I had Esterbrook desk sets that sat on my desk for a while. My SDs. So you've got you know the Esterbrook J's models like this. You got uh, another J, um, the M2 Esterbrook right there. Um, another copper colored J, uh, LJ's, LJ, another J, and then you've got the transitional in red. Uh, that I picked up a while back. Uh, let's see, it's another LJ that I picked up. And then I've got these, the desk pens. These were on my desk for a long time. I liked one well enough to pick up a second one. And I liked the second one good enough to pick up a third one, uh, and just because it had the clear tip on it. But these sit uh, in an eight ball. Um, when these ran out of ink, because I had a, another pen that I kind of like, that is an old Schaefer, I went ahead and started to use that instead for a desk pen. But these will rotate back in uh, to my rotation here sometime soon. Esterbrooks, they're plentiful, they're inexpensive, and it, they're good to learn on if you want to ever tear them apart and learn how to use them. One of the great things about these, if you ever have to service them, not only can you pull it apart and replace the sack fairly easily, um, these nibs, they come right out and you can swap them. The new Esterbrooks that are coming out, there is a nib that you can go into the new Esterbrooks that you can use your favorite old vintage Nestor Esterbrook nib and to be able to just put those in. But that's obviously an extra cost. I think it's like an extra 80 bucks on the new Esterbrooks. So. All right, next on my list, um, Parker. Um, I've got a, several different Parkers. My son has several different Parkers that I like. And uh, the Parker 45. This is a little different in the 45. My son has a 45 as well. It doesn't quite look like this, but it is nonetheless a Parker 45. This is the 45 Flighter. And I don't know how much ink this one still has left in it, but you can see it's got a very different nib, and I bought this one from Spear Bob a while back. And uh, let me see if this one even still writes, because I don't remember if it was inked or not. Nah, this one's going to have to be cleaned up. So uh, that should have been in my to clean pile. So uh, Parker 45 Flighter. It's uh, a classic. You've got that brushed uh, nickel look to it or that uh, stainless steel look to it. But I do like uh, Parker's and when this one was inked up in writing it wrote very very well. Alright now let's share with you another Parker. I just had this one restored and sent back to me. The Parker 51. My son has a 51 uh, and I really enjoyed that. You know, I had a, a Parker 21 of mine. I like the Parker 21 as well. And you can see it's uh, got that hooded nib on the 21. So most Parkers out of the 50s and 60s, I've really enjoyed. But I had this particular 51, and it, it, it is um, a vacuumatic filler. And so I needed to have this one serviced. So I sent it off, had it serviced, and it came back and it wrote like a dream. So this one here is my Parker 51. It helps if I hold the pen correctly. But anyway, that's um, one of my favorites. Coming back, it writes really smoothly. I've been using it quite a bit. Uh, and then obviously I rotated it out uh, within the past several days. So it's been sitting around for a couple of days, not used, but definitely one of my favorites. Uh, Waterman CF cartridge filler by Waterman. You know, I've got these four here, plus uh, another one or two in my drawer. Matthew has uh, at least one, and um, I know that these are not inked. This one, I do believe, has to be flushed out because uh, it was running out of ink. So. Uh, CF and CC. I believe one of these is a uh, CC, which is um, an aerometric filler, but cartridge fillers, 
uh, from the like late 50s, early 60s, and you can see you just put in a cartridge into that pen. I'll show you what a cartridge actually looks like here because I'm pretty sure that this one still has a cartridge in it. There you go. It kind of looks like that. It's just a uh, an old plastic cartridge, and that one had some uh, green ink in it. I believe it had some. Mont Blanc Irish Green. I know that needs to be flushed out. These were clean because uh, I took these out of my drawer. They're in my drawer, then they're clean or inked up, one or the other. Uh, let's see, what else have I got? Waterman Commando. Waterman made some nice, classy looking pens in the 40s and 50s. So the Commando was another one that I got. I liked it enough, so I bought a second one uh, when I found it was available. But the Waterman Commando is a nice lever filler. It uh, They write nicely. It's got the traditional style nib on them. And both of these have not, uh, the, uh, these are not inked up, so I can't try to show you what they write like. Uh, Obviously, I want to get these back into rotation now, eventually. It's because I got so many inked up right now, and I've got a pretty sizable collection that I don't get back to them in as quickly a manner as I would like. But my Waterman Commandos really enjoy those as well. One of my all-time favorite pens thus far is one I acquired several months back, and a Waterman 25. You may have seen the video that I did on that just recently, within the Red Ripple. And this one has been an incredible, incredible pen. It's got the uh, the Waterman number no. five nib on it. It's got the the gold cap on it. Uh, manufactured between 20, 1922, 1929, and the Waterman fifty five. What I like about this one in particular, it does not have a flexible nib. Now, don't get me wrong, I like flex nibs. I'm going to show you several with flex nibs on them that I really like. But this one here uh, actually has a manifold nib, which is a, more of a rigid nib, and it writes great. Love this pen. Absolutely love it. This is probably one of my favorites in my entire collection thus far. So, my Waterman 55. Schaefer Imperial 2. This one probably may have been as recent as the 1970s. And I showed you what the touchdown uh, filling system was like. This has got the conical nib on it. writes very, very smoothly, uh, as I would expect from a vintage Schaefer. A steel nib writes great. So I'm not going to show you the, the pull and plunge on this thing. And the big difference between this and the snorkel is it doesn't have a little snorkel that comes out. Uh, all it has is the touchdown filling system, so you would stick that down in the ink and and pull and use the, the touchdown filler on that. And I know that this one is not inked up right now either. It's been cleaned out and put away. So absolutely love this particular uh, Schaefer, the Imperial 2. Great pen. And they're only about 50 bucks. Uh, Peyton Street Pens is where I got that particular one. All right, uh, let's go back to Waterman for a minute. This one... Uh, if you watch uh, Steph's videos uh, over at Grand Mia Pens here on YouTube, he did a video on this particular pen. This is the one that he restored and made a video of, the Waterman W2. And it's in a plum color, and I absolutely loved this pen when I saw him do it. So I was the fortunate one to be able to purchase it from him. Nicely restored, the W2. And... This one has been cleaned since I used it when it ran out of ink, and I put it back up. So, Waterman W2. If you can find one, they're definitely worth having. Uh, Waterman pocket pens in general. Let's just go ahead and lump them all together. You know, the Waterman 3V, 32V, 52V. I know that these two need to be flushed. This is uh, the 52V in a, in a chased hard rubber and uh, missing a clip on it, but... Um, you know, it's a, it's a nice flexible nib on it with a Waterman number two nib. Uh, this one I know needs to be flushed out as well. Another Waterman pocket style or, or vest. The V uh, stands for vest. Uh, these two were also in my collection. This one I know is not inked up. And I can't remember whether I need to flush this one or not. I'm pretty sure I don't, but I'm going to set it aside. This one has the number two nib, but also it's a manifold nib. So this one is a uh, Waterman 
3V. And uh, I shared this one on a recent uh, pen mail because I got the, the replacement nib for it and I put a new uh, sack in it and it works great every single time. So um, though pocket pens are not my favorites, if I'm going to have a pocket pen, um, I've got a bunch of different pocket pens, both modern and uh, vintage. I kind of side with the vintage. So I would take these any day. Uh, let's go with... Mm, another uh, Schaefer, the Schaefer Balance. This is one I got uh, from a, a seller. This pen was a little bit beat up. I got it nicely polished. I put a new sack in it, and I got it cleaned up nicely, and it writes very, very well. Just not right now because it's out of ink. <laughs> so because I used it for a while, um, and I'm pretty sure that uh, I am out of ink on this one. Yeah, it's out of ink. Uh, so I know that this one needs to be cleaned just like a bunch of others, but the Schaefer Balance is a nice, very firm, rigid nib on it, writes smoothly, reliably when it's full of ink. Um, but I ran this one dry, so, um, but Schaefer, you probably noticed the pattern, Schaefer's, Waterman's, Schaefer, Waterman, Parker. So, like I said earlier, they made some of the, the better ones. Uh, Waterman 52. Now, if you saw the 55, this is another Waterman from about the same time period, a 1920s. And uh, this particular one has the number 2 nib as opposed to that number 5 nib. And uh, I got this one. It was in pretty rough shape. And I cleaned it up and, and refurbished it as best I could. And this one has the flexible number 2 nib. The Waterman 52. It's a little toothier on that but let me show you another number two waterman nib on this one from 1917 circa 1917 the waterman 12 this one is a, a very thin pen the black chased hard rubber from waterman's and this one has got a slip cap to it and this is one of my all-time favorite pens as well so the fifth the 55 and the 12 are two of my favorite vintage pens, bar none, I do believe. This one has an incredible, look at that line that you can get out of, um, you can go to a very fine line to that incredible flex and broad line like that. That is just amazing. Uh, this one came to me through Antique Digger. Uh, I bought it off from him. Waterman 12. See the difference in the in the writing between that number two nib and that number two nib? Not all number two nibs are the same. But this one here, the only thing I've got that's a problem with this one, uh, this one is um, an eyedropper. So there's it's not like there's a, an ink bladder or a cartridge or a converter. They didn't come along until much later. But the thing with this one is um, it burps. <laughs> I made the mistake of leaving it in the car when I ran in to have uh, dinner with my son. Uh, one day and you know opened it up and it inked everywhere um, I also one day carried it in my pocket um, and you know, I always use a pen carrier pouch uh, but um, it burped <laughs> so this is gonna be a, a one that I'm gonna use often but use at my desk and uh, just keep it here in the house in the house rather than carrying it um, anywhere with me so um, Waterman's now Here's what I will say about Waterman's. New Waterman pens, to me, write great. Um, I, I do like a lot of modern Waterman's. When you get the Schaefer's, it's a little different. Um, but I like newer Waterman's. I like vintage Waterman's. And I absolutely love this one from the 1910s, possibly 1917, thereabouts. Uh, you know, speaking of uh, you know Schaefer's, I've been showing you like vintage Schaefer's and all. Um, here's another... Uh, one's the Schaefer Cadet and that is another one that um, is a touchdown filling system that actually writes very well and it's got the modular nib to it just like the Esterbrooks do so uh, I know it had ink in it but I was it was running out of ink just the other day yep I'm running out of ink on that one I used this one just the other day and doggone it I knew it was running low <laughs> but uh, my Schaefer Cadet
Another Schaefer uh, pen that I really like, the Schaefer Tuckaway is a great little pen if you're talking about pocket pens like I, I did earlier. Uh, this one is out of ink and needs to be refilled or cleaned. I'll put it in my to clean pile over here, but I really like the Schaefer Tuckaway with that conical nib. It writes very smoothly uh, and it's a great little addition uh, to my pen collection. Let me compare though, let me show you a few of the, the more modern Schaefer's. This is a this is a more modern Schaefer, and uh, this one I need to put in a, a cartridge. It's cleaned out. Um, this is a modern Schaefer. You know, Schaefer now owned by AT Cross. Um, Schaefer Tyrannus, right here. Uh, let's say the Schaefer um, 100 over here. But compare that to some of the really great vintage Schaefers. I mean, look at that's that look just looks a lot classier and it, and it's a great performing pen. And some of the other Schaefer's that I've got over here, um, I shared with you the uh, like this one, the Imperial. I got to be honest. If I'm gonna choose a Schaefer, choose ones from when Schaefer was in their heyday, back when Schaefer was in all their glory and they were in mass production back in you know the 40s up through the 60s any day. Um, I'm not downing you know, Schaefer. What I am saying is that I'm just not as impressed with modern Schaefer's like these. They write okay, the Tyrannus is a, is a nice one. It's got a sweet spot to it. Um, this one here was a eh, you know, purchase. This one here wrote fairly good for 20 bucks, the, uh, the Schaefer Pop. Um, and this one, you know, part of the Star Wars collection. So, I mean, these are all right, but I gotta be honest with you, when it comes to Schaefer's, having used the old and used the new, I'd go with the vintage any day. All right, just a couple more to show you guys. Um, Parker, Parker Vacuumatic. My understanding is that this is not the correct top to go onto this particular Parker, but it is a vacuumatic, much like I showed you um, with the Parker 51. And this was my pen of the day just the other day uh, because I got my 51 and played with it and loved it. Uh, after it got came back from being restored, I went ahead and inked up my Parker vacuumatic. So. in that golden pearl color. Love it. Great pen. Writes well. If you can find a good vac, um, well worth the investment. They're solid, they're reliable, they write smoothly, and uh, just a classy looking pen. And just a great writer. It's never gone wrong. You know, last time I, I ran it dry of ink and cleaned it up and put it up for a while <laughs> and because I never got back to it in rotation until just recently and only recently because I said hmm yeah I missed my Parker vac after having used the Parker 51 I went ahead and dug this one out go back to Schaefer for a minute the Schaefer PFM pens for men this is a fairly recent acquisition for me I like the girth of it I like the size of it uh, these are a little harder to come by or to find but they're still a great pen so um, I would highly recommend the the Schaefer PFM this is the PFM 3 the only thing that I don't like oh I can't say don't like but the thing I would like to be different about this pen is to have a medium nib as opposed to the fine nib it still writes very nicely it writes very reliably but I do and you get a little bit of flex if you wanted to play with it but I do like medium nibs better than fine nibs and uh, this is just a classy looking pen reliable pen writes great I just wish it was in a fine uh, uh, instead of a fine it would, it would have been in a medium uh, point but um, anyway still a great pen and I'm glad I've got it in my collection and I've used this one an awful lot since I've had it great pen uh, another uh, Waterman that was in my collection is the Citation tape right citation from the 1940s and I've got two of these actually um, and you can see that the slender the tape right is a description it's not a model and it's got that tape right body to it I've got a few more tape rights in my collection but very smooth writer great pen and uh, that about does it for Waterman now you can find inexpensive 
uh, pens if you want that, that are uh, antique or are vintage. And I've got a bunch of them. I only grabbed two, two of my favorites uh, that were on the lower end. Uh, this right here is a Packard. It's a button filler. I'll show you what a button filler looks like here on the end. You've got a, literally a button. And uh, this Packard actually writes very, very nicely. This one, like many of the others, is out of ink. <laughs> so I can't show you that. But it's a gorgeous pen, and it writes very, very nicely. I like this particular pen. And uh, then I, I pulled this one out as a representative of uh, some of the others, the Cascade. Um, and it's a, it's a classic-looking pen. And this one was actually a very, very smooth writer. And as I recall, um, it's got the very smooth brand name very smooth nib and when you can find a vintage pen then you've got the the name very smooth right on the nib they usually live up to the name so you can find those um, but this was a cascade and so I brought these out these these two are not um, at the top of my list but they're definitely up there and they're really really good writing pens and I enjoy them so there you are those are some of my favorites um, you know the uh, Schaefer's, Parker's, Waterman's, you know, a couple of off brands that are thrown in there. I definitely, um, w with some brands, I prefer vintage over uh, modern. Some brands, I like both vintage and modern, like as with Waterman. Um, you know, Parker, you don't really see much around much, except maybe the Vector and the Urban. I've got those in my collection as well. But when it comes to their modern pens, to me, they don't hold a candle to their, their old vintage pens that I just absolutely adore. So anyway, there you go. Uh, that's my uh, collection, or not, obviously not my entire collection, but out of my collection, these are some of my favorites uh, that I've had. Uh, so if you wanted to add some to your collection, maybe you can start with uh, an Esther book. Maybe you can start with something like that Packard. Uh, maybe some old Schaefer's. Um, if you can find uh, a decent deal on an old Waterman, uh, especially in that uh, that Red Ripple hard rubber, mm, great condition, fantastic writing pens. Uh, Schaefer Balance, that's always a good one you can probably find. But Esther Brooks, you're going to find a plenty and uh, restored and up to snuff. So in, enjoy, guys. Uh, hopefully you can find something that you would really like to add to your collection out of this uh, rinky-dink little video. So thanks, guys.